Okay, YouTube, we are back in the shop today and we are talking galvanized. Galvanized, zinc, hot dipped, whatever you want, whichever route you want to go. We're not going to get into the chemistries or the processes uh, very much, but we're going to be talking about welding galvanized. And the interesting thing is, this is done on a mass scale around. Around the world, basically, wherever galvanized steel is, wherever the need for uh, corrosion resistance comes up. So today I have some little test plates. I'll show you the tack up. Um, it's 14 gauge, so it's 0.074 thickness, and it's we call it galvanized in the sheet metal industry. It's actually zinc plated or a galvanil process. So the electroplating for the zinc is basically what the sheet's going to be. The other forms of galvanized or hot dip galvanized, which is actually a dipping process into, you know, they clean it and then they dip it into a galvanized tank. And everybody has their own flavor. Big R carries green and red and color coded galvanized and then grade 8 stuff which I don't have on I do have on hand but I don't have shown here is uh, cadmium a cadmium coating so there's there's zinc and some other stuff in there too so one of the myths of welding galvanized or zinc or hot dipped is uh, metal fever metal fume fever um, you know, people say they get sick. People say they get, they start feeling bad after welding this stuff. Or you get the flu and you have to go home and drink milk and put potatoes on your feet or what, whatever. And it's actually been proven that zinc is a, not a carcinogen. It will not hurt you. That's why they sell zinc tablets when you get sick, right? Um, it, it's... And I, when I say that, it affects everybody differently. Um, I have myself gotten the quote-unquote zinc flu before. And I did notice when I was welding this production in a production atmosphere, um, I got sick a lot easier. And that's probably because of the overabundance of zinc, which is counterproductive to why you would take zinc to get over cold but anyway it, it affects everybody differently some people get really sick over it some people it doesn't affect at all the major problem I had with it was it tastes bad while you're welding it so we're gonna do some test plates today the main thing with zinc is keep your head out of the fumes uh, first plate we're gonna do is an open corner We'll do half of it horizontal, or I'm sorry, flat, half of it flat, and half of it downhill because for this thin gauged metal, a lot of the times we run it downhill and it's strong enough at a downhill position. So let's get started. So this, this test coupon, I did not grind the galvanized off. It is um, it's fully galvanized. We will do a test coupon with grinding. Okay, so with galvanized or zinc, it actually melts and vaporizes off. 900, a little higher, it starts vaporizing. Okay, still actually melts between, you know, 2200 Fahrenheit to 3000 Fahrenheit, depending on thickness and yada yada. So, you'll see as I weld that zinc will start to burn off. And there will be plumes of white smoke. Obviously, don't breathe the smoke. That's the biggest thing with welding zinc or welding galvanized or welding something you don't know, you know, what's in there, what's on there. Keep your head out of the smoke, put a fan up, whatever. I'm going to go turn on a fan. Obviously, don't blow your shielding gas away. Okay, so tack this to the table at an angle you can see it. See the smoke? Okay. We'll do the downhill first.
large plumes of smoke. Sorry about the noise of the noisy ESOP. And this white powder is the zinc burning off, and that's the byproduct of the zinc burning off. Don't breathe it. Don't stick your head in it. Wear a respirator. And another big problem. Let me turn the. Uh, another big problem with welding zinc or galvanized is uh, porosity. So it's really easy to get porosity on these kind of joints. So you got to keep an eye out for that. Okay, see the smoke? Yeah, the little white specks. <laughs> Don't want to breathe it. Keep your head out of the smoke. Okay, so we got a joint. A little hotter on that one because it was flat. And you see all this white goop, dust, film. That's the byproduct of the zinc burning off. Okay. Okay, so that was an open corner, um, flat and downhill. Let's try. A T joint. Now, T joint is going to be a little more difficult just because of uh, there's more area of galvanized that you have to burn off as you weld. Let's see what happens. Okay, you notice the excessive amount of spatter, the little pinhole in the crater there? That is galvanized. That's because you're burning off a coating before the base metal, before the weld gets to the base metal. Okay? So if you want to fix that and you don't want it to be as bad, and this is obviously, if you can and within spec, grind it out. Take a little extra time, grind off the coating. Now obviously I didn't get all the coating, but it should be better. little better. There's still some zinc in the very, very bottom of the corner. Let's try a downhill and a horizontal that's been ground. Should be a lot smoother. A lot smoother. Still got the film on the back because it's burning the zinc off of the back side. So I turned the noisy sub off. Now, why would we have zinc coatings, you know? Why? Why why, why would we want to weld zinc coat? Why, do, why would we even do that? You know, if it's nasty, it stinks, it's hard to weld, it's a pain to weld. You have to pre-grind everything. Well, the galvanized and the zinc create a corrosion barrier. 
So when steel is just on its own and it starts to oxidize, it's rusting. With the zinc coatings, the zinc is more, no, sorry, less noble than the steel. So it's going to corrode first. So the zinc is actually corroding slowly. It takes a long time, but the zinc is, is corroding before the steel. So until all that zinc is gone, the steel won't rust. And that's the reason they put the big zinc um, blocks on the bottom of ships so that the zinc will wear away before the steel does. And that's an extreme environment because it's salt water. Salt water will rust the hell out of everything. Um, and most zincs will have, you know, specks that come with them. So, you know, these bolts are Ford Motor Company's version of zinc. I don't, I don't know what's in them. I don't know the process, whatever. But a lot of this stuff is thousand hour salt sprays and beyond that. And that's with UL testing and other testing facilities, but... So that's my zinc spiel for the day. Um, questions, comments, and you know, let me know if you have any questions. It's not a big deal to weld this. You might feel funky. It tastes terrible. Um, you're not going to die. So if you want a sheet metal job or there's an opening in the weld stations, go for it. I mean, don't be afraid of the zinc. It's an old folks tale that, you know, it's going to kill you. It's going to make you sick. I mean, you're not going to feel the best depending on who you are. Everybody's different, but don't be afraid to weld galvanized. Subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Okay. A little bonus footage here. We're going to do a flat running about 90, uh, let me check. 93, 96 amps, about 16.2 volts. So that's, that's what I ran, oops, sorry, all this stuff on, okay? Obviously travel speed is a lot higher because of the, the sheet metal being so thin. So we're gonna do a flat plate. But in this industry, a lot of the time, these welds are gonna get ground. So when you're grinding a weld any time, structurally, you know, sheet metal, whatever, you're removing strength. Um, so we'll see if we can get it to do it. I might have to turn the welder up a little bit, but I'm going to show you how to weld a flat joint simulating possibly a bent joint, which is what you're going to see quite a bit in the industry. Um, and we're going to see if we can't get the weld to come through on the backside. That's how you're going to want to do it if you get a sheet metal job, okay? So let's get set up here. I'm gonna to have to adjust my settings because there's a sweet spot and it has it involves your speeds and feeds it involves your temperatures but what you're looking for is that weld puddle to actually drop and it'll be flat on the top and you'll have a weld on the bottom or the inside of a box or whatever the situation might be but this is how we used to do these type of joints so that when we ground them there was still strength behind the weld and it cut your grinding times way down. So, let's see what we can do. Wobbly table. Okay, starting out there. I see the weld on the bottom. I see the weld on the top. It's a little high. I'm gonna turn her up just a fuzz. not bad but there's not a lot of weld coming through the bottom let's try it again I'm gonna slow down just a fuzz and obviously the plates getting hotter so that's helping me too OK, 
Okay, that was the sweet spot. So you see all the weld on the back side. Okay, it looks like I welded this side. That side's flat. I can grind it. Save you a ton of time and make sure you don't have any cracks. Thanks for watching.